Okay, guys, so we just went into the respiratory failure, the ventilation problems, versus your uh, exchange problems. So you can be having trouble getting that oxygen down into your lungs. Um, and that trouble can come from having a decreased diaphragm, decreased muscles, myasthenia gravis, any other kind of, let's just say, neurological problem. You can also have COPD. You can also have a pulmonary embolism. Just the mechanics is messed up. You're unable to take deep breaths, right? You can have a broken rib. You can have a pneumothorax, which is preventing you from taking deep breaths, getting that ventilation in. Now, in terms of your quality, the exchange of your uh, patient, the exchange of oxygen from oxygen to blood, how much O2 is actually jumping on board of that hemoglobin, uh, that is the oxygen, the quality portion of it. So. You can have decreased hemoglobin that's preventing you. You can also have what is called, um, you can also have low oxygen in the atmosphere, what we see with uh, people who climb mountains. So we'll have low oxygen here. You can have low atmosphere. Let me see. Low atmospheric oxygen. And you know, that's like, <laughs> I always laugh because that's like saying, you know, all the side effects for drugs, um, they always sometimes have um, Steven Johnson syndrome in them. Even though I've never seen anyone with Steven Johnson syndrome, um, it's like, what? Right? So, uh, one thing with low atmosphere, that could be a problem. There's not enough oxygen in the air, which almost like never happens unless you're um, climbing in the Alps somewhere, right? But one of the big ones is low um, hemoglobin or low volume in the blood. Same thing, low blood volume. We don't have enough oxygen carriers in the body. Or let's just say that there's a blockage between those oxygen carriers with way too much fluid in the lungs. We have too much fluid in the lungs, which is blocking that oxygen to get to jump from the alveoli onto our blood. And if we have that um, um, wet lungs, they call, or basically too much edema in the lungs, it's going to block that quality of oxygen. So this really leads us into our um, acute respiratory, I'm sorry, uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome, our ARDS. So really what happens in ARDS is really the same thing. Our acute respiratory failure will lead into ARDS. Woo! ARDS. <laughs> Just like saying your patient in sepsis goes into sepsis shock or septic shock and also has SERS criteria, okay? It's not like three separate different things. It's just saying, do you have a small problem? Do you have a medium problem? Do you have a large problem? We're still going to McDonald's. We're still ordering the Big Mac special. But is it a small Big Mac? Is it a medium Big Mac special? Or do you want to supersize that Big Mac special? Same type of thing. Acute respiratory failure will lead into a diagnosis saying, this patient is in ARDS, it's a supersized problem, it's bad. So 
how do we know that your patient is bad in terms of how do we know? So let's go into how do we know if a patient is in ARDS? So let's get into that right now here.